Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Tariq Amin, lecturer in the Department of English, Kohat University of Science and Technology, Kohat. Have a warm welcome to the course of study skills. The course code is ENG123. This is lecture number 18 and the topic for today's discussion is strategies for vocabulary building. Lecture outlines of today's class include the first of First of all, we will discuss strategies for vocabulary building. Uh, the strategies are reading, repetition, words in context, prefixes and affixes, etc. So these are lecture outlines. We would, in short, we will discuss the different strategies for vocabulary building in today's class. And we will discuss six to seven different strategies. Okay, expansion through. Uh, first of all, we can expand our vocabulary through reading, repetition, and then words in context, vocabulary trees, and word walls, root words, prefixes and suffixes, synonyms and antonyms, word formation charts, word lists, and visual dictionaries, and word games. In the previous class, we had discussed vocabulary, we had discussed aspects of knowing a word and then we, at the end of the class, we had discussed importance of vocabulary. And in the, in the previous class, we had discussed that when you say that I know a word or when you say that the word is known to me, it means that you know its form, you know its structure, you know its pronunciation. You know its grammar, you know its collocation, and you know its meaning, you know its denotative meaning, you know its connotative meaning, etc. It means that you know its form, you know its grammar, and you know its meaning. And uh, we had discussed that without uh, having a good stock of vocabulary, without uh, having extensive vocabulary, you cannot communicate your ideas, your feelings, your emotions with other people other people effectively in order to exchange your ideas in order to share your ideas with other your friends your classmates your teachers and your family members you need to have vocabulary you need to have word in a particular language for example if you are uh, Pashto you are native speaker of Pashto you need to have good stock of uh, Pashto word and if you are uh, learner of English language, first of all, you need to learn vocabulary. You need to learn words of that language, that is English language. In order to improve your language, in order to your listening skills, your reading skills, your writing skills, and your speaking skills, you need to improve your vocabulary. The key to the development of language, the key to learning a language is to, first of all, develop vocabulary. If your vocabulary is developed and you know large number of words, you can express your ideas and you can learn a language better. You can learn a language in a short period of time. So words are very much important in any language. And when you say that we need to develop vocabulary, we need to build vocabulary, we need to use different strategies that helps us develop our vocabulary, that helps us build our vocabulary. And we are going to discuss uh, 12 different strategies with the help of which a particular person, a particular learner can build his or her vocabulary. And the first one is expansion through reading. You can expand your vocabulary through reading. You need to read more and more. And when you read more and, and more, you come across large number of words. And when you focus upon those words, those words become part of your vocabulary. Those words become past, part of your long-term memory. Those words become part of your vocabulary. Reading is one of the best ways of expanding vocabulary. If you want to expand your vocabulary, you need to read more and more. You need to read newspapers, you need to read different articles in your cell phone, you need to read different books in your laptop, in your mobile and, and everything. If you want to expand your vocabulary, you need if you want to learn more and more words of a particular language, you need to read more and more words. No, sorry, more and more 
books more and more texts highlight familiar vocabulary in one color and unfamiliar vocabulary with another color when you read a text you need to do two things you need to have two highlighters when you come across a word that is familiar to you you need to highlight it in one color and if, if you come across word that are not familiar to you that are unknown to you you need to highlight it with another color for example you can use red color red highlighter for known words and yellow highlighter for unknown words for unfamiliar words and check unfamiliar words in dictionary after completing your reading or during the reading process you need to check the unfamiliar words in your dictionary you can use printed dictionary for it and you can use e dictionary for it as well you need to install different good dictionary oxford advanced learner dictionary or cambridge dictionary or uh, Uh, Merriam Webster dictionary in your cell phone in order to check different unfamiliar words that you come across in different texts and memorize and practice the new words okay the key to success is memorize and practice new words for example if you learn a new word you come across a difficult word and you do check its meaning but you don't practice and do you don't memorize it and you don't practice it you will forget it because i've come across different difficult words and i've checked their meaning too but still when again uh, when uh, in other reading process or in other book i come across such words it becomes highly difficult for me to uh, to memorize or to recall the meaning of those words because i haven't practiced those words you need to memorize and practice the new word the unfamiliar words if you want to learn them now expansion through repetition repeat repeat and just repeat this is this has been written for emphasis purposes if you want to learn a, a word you need to repeat it you need to repeat repeat and just repeat it repetition has a powerful impact on learning okay the more times we are exposed to a word the stronger our understanding become the more you are exposed to a word the more you understand your understanding becomes and it takes a minimum 15 encounters with a new word 15 encounters very much important point it takes a minimum 15 encounters with a new word for a student to understand first of all to understand it and then apply the word independently and apply the word in different context so some people learn new words within 10 8 to 10 encounters or 6 to 7 encounters but some students takes at least 15 minimum 15 encounters with a word to understand it and then apply the word in different context Okay, we can expand our vocabulary through word through words in context as well. We have discussed the same point uh, in previous classes as well that we can guess the meaning of unfamiliar words uh, from the context as well. So this is uh, a bit similar to that lecture. Let's discuss this. This is the very best way to learn and teach vocabulary is in the very best way to learn. and teach vocabulary is in context and if you want to teach vocabulary you te- want to teach words to students the best way is to teach vocabulary in context if you teach a word in context the students will be able to memorize it and they will be able to apply it in different contexts until and unless you teach a word vocabulary in a particular context the students will face difficulties in understanding the word and after that applying the word in different context in using the word in different context do not select individual words teach words in context it means that if you you are using another strategy for example you have made a list of 100 words 100 difficult words and you tell your students to learn uh, to memorize these 100 words the students will be able to memorize some students might not be able to memorize but some students will still be able to memorize it but 
after one month or after two months, three months or four months, they will forget it. They will forget the, the uh, almost 90% of the words and they would be able to just memorize 10% of the words. This is not the best strategy. This is not the best strategy. The best strategy is to teach the words in different contexts. Teach them just 10 words, teach them just 20 words, but teach them the words in context. Context will help them understand a word, it will help them memorize a word, and it will help them apply the word in different contexts independently. Teaching vocabulary is in context is more effective. I've discussed the same point. Teaching vocabulary or teaching different words of a particular language within context is more effective. Okay, the next strategy is teaching through vocabulary trees. A graphic, so what is vocabulary tree? Vocabulary tree is a graphic organizer which can be useful in building vocabulary. It is actually building, uh, sorry, graphic organizer. You might have seen different trees, vocabulary trees. It is like tree. Let's discuss it. Used, it is used for finding relationships and making connections between groups of vocabulary words. And made up of a trunk, it is made up of a trunk, roots, branches and leaves. And the trunk contains, or in the trunk we write the main concept or a key term. And in the branches, branches hold related terms, ideas or examples. Okay, the uh, vocabulary trees are very much important and you can uh, expand your vocabulary through vocabulary trees as well. You should search uh, what a vocabulary tree is in the internet. You will see that it is like uh, uh, a natural tree. It contains a trunk, it contains different roots, branches and leaves. And in the trunk, we write the main concept. We write the key term or we write the main word. And in the different branches, we write its synonyms, we write an antonym, we write the related term to the word, we write the connotative meanings of such word, we write the denotative meanings of different words in the different branches. So, this is also one of the helpful strategy for building vocabulary. Okay, word walls. Uh, we can expand our vocabulary with the help of word walls as well. Word wall is systematically organized collection of keywords from a unit of study. Now, unit of study can be your chapter, it can be your book as well. For example, uh, your unit of study is uh, cell. This is one unit of study. Now, you write the different keywords that are related to this unit of study that is real that are related to the key you the unit of your study that is cell you write you make a word wall for this unit of study that is cell you write different words for it and word walls receive a prominent place in a classroom environment and you can uh, put that word wall in your class environment as well in your class as well. They are usually front and center, large and easy to see. These word walls are great places to put high frequency words throughout the year. I've given you the example of a unit of study that is cell. For example, your unit of study is cell. Uh, let me give you another example. For example, your unit of study is psycholinguistics. This is unit, your unit of study. Now, you think of different keywords, different important words, different high frequency words, different uh, momentous words that are related to the field of study, that is related to the, that are related to your unit of study, psycholinguistics. You think of different words, for example, 10 words, 15 words, 20 words or 30 words. You think of 30 words that are very much related to your unit of study, psycholinguistics. And you write those 20 words, 30 keywords in the form of walls. And you put it 
uh, you put it in the form of wall, you put it in the form of, you write them in the form of wall, walls. And whenever some st other students come across those walls, those word wall they learn it from them. And uh, these words are also great place to put high frequency, high frequency words throughout the year. For example, uh, you are learning English language and in your classroom you people write high frequency word in different, on different walls. You can put different high frequency walls and words on that wall throughout the year and students will learn it. And expansion through root words. Now what are root words? Focus on teaching roots. First of all, if you want to teach vocabulary, you need to teach roots. And then roots can help in understanding new words meaning. If you know the meaning of a root word, you can guess the meaning of a full word that contains a word, root word that you know. So before teaching them the words, uh, let's discuss it. For example, before teaching them the word useful, and helpless etc these are just two examples before teaching the student these two words you need to teach them about you need to teach them use you need to teach them what is you need to teach them what is use and then what is help if the students if your students know the meaning of help they know the meaning of uh, help use they know the meaning they are structure they know their grammar they know their uh, form and they know their pronunciation they will be able to understand the words useful and helpless teach them the word so use is one root word and help is another root word they know the meaning of root words. They will be able to understand word having prefixes and suffixes. In this example, full is suffix and list is also suffix. Now, expansion through prefixes and suffixes. We can build our vocabulary. We can expand our vocabulary through learning prefixes and suffixes. First of all, we need to learn common prefixes and suffixes. You need to download if you want to learn different word. First of all, you need to download a list of prefixes and suffixes. And you know, you need to understand, you need to memorize the meaning of different prefixes and suffixes in different contexts. For example, different prefixes and suffixes gives different meaning in different words. So you need to know the different prefixes and suffixes and the different meaning that they give when they are attached to different words. Help in enriching vocabulary. This is obvious. For example, I, R, N, N are negative prefixes. They are negative prefixes. If you know the meaning of the words regular and correct you would be able to know the meaning of irregular and incorrect. You know the meaning of the root word regular. You need, you know the meaning of the word, the root word correct. And you attach the prefixes IR to regular and IN to incorrect. If you know the words regular and correct, and you know the prefixes IN, I R and I N as well, so you would be able to guess the meaning of irregular and incorrect. So similarly, suffix nix, nis. Uh, we have suffix nis. We have different suffixes. We have uh, different suffixes such as nis, uh, nis, uh, full, etc. These are different kinds of suffixes. These are different suffixes. So we have one suffix nis. If you know the meaning of kind, you would be able to know the meaning of kindness as well if you know the meaning of suffix nix, nis, and you know the meaning of the root word kind. You would be able to know the meaning of kindness because this, this very word kindness contains a root word kind and 
a suffix nis. And if you know the meaning of the root word and suffix, you would be able to know the meaning of this difficult word. Now, we can expand our vocabulary through synonyms and antonyms as well. And what are synonyms and what are antonyms? Synonyms and antonyms are fun and lively ways to learn new vocabulary and improve language skills. For example, okay, now what are synonyms and antonyms? Synonyms are words uh, having almost similar meanings and antonyms are words having uh, almost opposite meaning. And the synonym of intelligence are the synonym of intelligence are this is intelligence the word and its synonym are bright smart and gifted etc and antonyms of intelligence are stupid dim slow dull etc we will learn a new word you need to search its synonyms and antonyms as well for example if you come across a word this very word intelligent the intelligence our intelligence this that is unknown to you you need to search its synonyms and you need to search its antonyms as well this will help you expand your vocabulary you would be able to learn the man word and after that you will be able to learn its synonyms and antonyms as well so from just one word you can learn 10 words Expansion through word list. There is difference between word wall and word list. Word list provides students with any keyword and make word lists of that word. You provide student with a keyword and you also provide them with different words list of that word. For example, deserts, mountains, Oceans, rivers, for example, oceans, rivers, these are different keywords, bays, curves, etc. Now, we can expand our vocabulary to word games as well. There are many word games with the help of which you can improve your vocabulary. With the help of which you can build and develop your vocabulary. Word games also improve our vocabulary, making the exercises fun and enjoyable. When you learn your vocabulary, learn different words, words through word games, it makes this exercise fun and enjoyable. There are a number of games. There are many games which you can utilize to, exp to expand your vocabulary we are discuss we are going to discuss just three types of games the first one is hangman hangman game this is one word game the second one is crosswords games and the last one is scrabble game scrabble word game through these different word games you can expand your vocabulary okay these are the differences so before going to the differences let's uh, we summarized the class. So in today's class, we discussed uh, different strategy that can be helpful in expanding vocabulary. We discussed that uh, we discussed that we can expand our vocabulary through different strategies. We can use different strategy for developing our vocabulary. We discussed that we can develop our vocabulary through reading. If you want to expand your vocabulary, you need to read more and more. You need to read more and more books. You need to read more and more newspapers. You need to read more and more texts. If you want to improve your vocabulary, you need, if you want to expand your vocabulary, if you want to develop your vocabulary. And after that, you need to repeat the word. We can expand our vocabulary to repetition as well. When you learn a new word, you need to repeat it again and again. You need to memorize it and you need to practice it again and again. With practice, you will be able to learn the word and you will be able to apply it in different contexts. And the next strategy that we discussed or the next method that we discussed was expansion through context. We can expand our vocabulary through words in context as well. 
we can guess the meaning of different difficult words uh, from the context as well and we discussed that the best way to teach vocabulary is to teach them teach it in context if you want to teach a particular word to student you want to teach 10 words to student you need to teach the, those words in context if you want you teach different words in context student will be able to memorize it students will be able to understand it and students will be able to apply the same words in different contexts so this the best strategy to teach vocabulary is to teach in context and we also discussed that we can expand our vocabulary to word list as well you can provide student with a list of 10 words you can provide student with uh, a list of 10 keywords and you can ask them to memorize the words and we can expand our vocabulary through word wall as well and I've discussed what a word wall is a word wall is a kind of a reading strategy where you can expand your with the help of which you can expand your vocabulary for example you have a unit of study I've just given you the examples of cell our psycholinguistic cell is your unit of study and you think of different keywords that are related to your unit of study and you write those words in the form of wall okay after making a list of keywords that are related to your unit of study you put them on you put the list on wall and students learn the keywords from uh, the word wall and we can expand our vocabulary through prefixes and suffixes prefixes are the words that are at prefixes are the word form that are another word prefixes are the morpheme that are attached to the beginning of word and suffixes are the uh, different uh, forms these are the different morpheme that are attached to the end of a verb and we can expand our vocabulary through prefixes and suffixes for example, this is a prefix, in is a prefix, ir is a prefix, and suffix, the examples of suffixes are nis, full, etc. If we know the meaning of different prefixes and suffixes, we can learn different words through them as well. We can, at least we can guess the meaning of the, the different difficult words. And we can expand our vocabulary through uh, root words as well. Root words are the basic words. These are the base words and if you know the meaning of a root word and you come across a difficult word that contains that root word that you know for example you come across a word kindness which is unfamiliar to you but you know the meaning of the word kind you know the meaning of the word kind which is root word you know the meaning of the word kind from this uh, from this uh, root word you can guess the meaning of the word kindness at least you can guess its meaning and we can guess the uh, sorry we can uh, learn vocabulary through antonyms and synonyms as well antonyms are the words having opposite meaning and synonyms are the words having similar meaning we discussed intelligent intelligence and we discussed its different uh, we discussed its different uh, synonyms which uh, for example smart and we discuss its antonyms as well when you come across a word a difficult word uh, in your reading process while you are reading a book you need to check the meaning of that difficult word and if you want to expand your vocabulary your vocabulary more and more you can learn you can search its synonyms and you can search and its antonyms as well it would help you improve your vocabulary from just one difficult word you would be able to learn 10 15 difficult 10 15 other words as well so this is also one of the best strategy to improve your vocabulary to build your vocabulary you can improve your vocabulary through synonyms and antonyms as well and you can uh, in order to if you want to improve your vocabulary you need to install dictionary in your cell phone all of us have different advanced cell phones and we can't carry different printed dictionaries with ourselves so the best way is to install different uh, di dictionaries 
you can install medium webster dictionary you can install oxford advanced dictionary you can install cambridge dictionary as well and that provide you provides uh, those dictionary dictionary provide you with different services provide you with the spelling of words with the pronunciation of words with the meaning of those difficult words with the usage of those different words and with the etymology of those words those difficult words as well you can check the spelling of a word in the dictionary you can check its phonetic transcription you can check its meaning you can check its grammatical category as well for example uh, you can check the grammatical category of the difficult word intelligence as well you can check its correct spelling you can check its usage you can check its etymology etymology means you can check its origin you can check its history and you can check its antonyms as well you can check its synonyms as well so the best way to improve your vocabulary is to install i an advanced dictionary you can install the the different well, uh, let me uh, suggest you some dictionary you can install uh, you can install cambridge dictionary you can install oxford advanced learner dictionary you can install merriam webster dictionary easily in your cell phone thank you very much for uh, listening to the video if you have any question to ask you can uh, ask me uh, thank you very much Allah Hafiz. See you in the next class.